Welcome, my friends, to Church of the Highlands Evening Service, Missio Dei, for September 27th. Some of you might know that uh, we're in the High Holy Days that Orthodox Jews are celebrating. And today and tomorrow, actually starting at sunset tonight, going to sunset tomorrow, is the day called Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And the scripture talks a lot about that, how it is the day when the high priest goes into the most holy place to make sacrifices for the sins of the whole nation. I decided to start tonight with a section from Psalm 118, kind of inspired by those thoughts. Let Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is from Psalm 118. This is our worship tonight, to give to God the praise that he deserves and to hear from him, from his heart, from his word, what he wants us to know to be his people, in this nation. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you so much that we have the opportunity to praise and worship you. And now we lift our hearts, we lift our voices, and please, Lord, you lift us up into heavenly realms as we sing your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, good evening, everyone. So good to be back with you again. Nothing but a privilege and an honor. Anytime I stand to lead God's people into his presence, into his glory through our worship and through our praise. And so I extend an invitation to come on and stand to your feet if you can and engage with me the presence of God. Sing this song together. It's called Graves into Garden and God turns graves into gardens. Here we go. Oh, I search the world. But it could. Treasures that fade are never enough. But you came along and you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing. There's nothing better than the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Oh, Lord, you've seen them all. You still call me friend because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Sing along, church.
winter morning to dance in You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only one who can You're the you glad about it church thank you guys for worshiping come on let's continue to sing and in our time of worship celebrate God's faithfulness thank you Jesus My God's gonna do it, perform His word. Yes, He will, yes, He will. Faithful, very simple chorus. God is faithful. I know He is to perform. My God's gonna do it, perform His word. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And God is bigger than my mountain, bigger than my valleys, bigger than my problems, bigger than my pain, our God. God is faithful. Come on, church, sing along, sing along. And God is bigger than my mountain. Bigger than my valleys, bigger than my problem. Oh, he's bigger than my pain, our God. God is faithful. Let's sing that verse. Faithful, faithful. God is faithful. It don't matter what's going on, church. God is faithful to perform God's gonna do it perform his word yes he will yes he will yes he will oh, faithful even when I'm not oh my God is faithful to perform God's gonna do it perform his word Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And God is bigger than my mountain, bigger than my valley.
that leaves He's bigger than my problem Oh, he's bigger than my pain Our God Our God is faithful Sing that chorus He's bigger than And God is bigger than my mountain Bigger than my valley Bigger than my problem He's bigger than my pain Our God God is faithful, oh, oh, our God, our God is faithful, sing that one more time, our God, our God is faithful. Thank you guys for worshiping along. And thank you, Junior, for leading us in worship. I always say musicians are going to have a job in heaven. Maybe not evangelists because everybody's saved, but musicians will always have a job to lift our voices in praise forever. Again, welcome if you hopped on uh, after the service began to our Church of the Highlands evening service, Missio Day. We have some exciting announcements tonight. The first one is San Mateo County has moved from the, the purple tier to the red tier, which means that we can start to have uh, congregations assembled inside the church for worship services. Now, the mornings are already set up and uh, the, the evening service, Missio, hasn't been set up yet, but we are planning two weeks from tonight to open the doors and have a congregation here live October 11th. So mark that on your calendars. Also go on the Highlands website, highlands.us, to update your information. Make sure we've got your current email address in particular because we send out invitations and you need to respond to that invitation, follow the instructions, uh, in order to be a part of the congregation here on these Sunday nights. We also need volunteers, obviously, and we want to be ready in two weeks to be able to open the doors. So we need volunteers for tech, we need volunteer ushers, and we need volunteer musicians. So please contact us at missioday at highlands.us or B at highlands.us. Also, back to the church website, we have new fall classes. So check that for new groups, new studies, new worship opportunities, highlands.us for the fall schedule. We haven't forgotten the North Peninsula Food Pantry, so Bonnie B is still in charge of that. So if you have food that you like to donate to help those less fortunate, that's Bonnie B at highlands.us. She's the, the conduit for getting the food to the North Peninsula Food Pantry. And finally, this is a personal request from me, Pastor Dave, to all of you. Most of you know in five weeks and two days, uh, we have an election. And I would like all of us to commit to pray, to pray for our nation, uh, all of its ills and all of its good things, but pray for us, pray for our selections, pray for everything about this nation. The future is kind of rolled up in the choices that, that we make on that Tuesday and the days before that. But the main prayer is to intercede for our nation uh, that we can return to God uh, and fix the many problems that we know that we're facing. But he is the answer, and we know that. We rest in him, we trust him. And now to continue our series uh, that we're, we're doing for the, the next six weeks or so. Uh, it's called Dual Citizenship. And it's about being a citizen of heaven, but practicing that heavenly citizenship here on earth. So last week I gave you a message about Daniel and his connection with Nebuchadnezzar. Tonight we're going to continue to look at Daniel. Uh, Jomer, our, the head of our singles ministry, is going to give us a message on Daniel and the handwriting on the wall, the Most High God. Jomer.
Good evening, and happy beautiful Sunday to you all. Before I move on, I would like to pray for all of us. Precious Heavenly God, thank you so much for blessing us another day. It is a joy to know that from the time we woke up, when we opened our eyes, it was your sustaining grace that was waiting for us. Every strength that we used, every wisdom that we used came from your hand. Remind me, O oh Lord, as I present this message, may I present it in a way that is clear, faithful to your word, and may you remind me it is through the work of the Holy Spirit, not by my strength, so that in the end, I will not boast, but rather praise the one who sustains me. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Welcome. Happy Sunday. As Pastor Dave, as Christians, we live in dual citizen. Securing God's hand and saving God's hand, which is heaven, but we still live in this world called earth. And we still face the same struggles. And one of those things that we're, look, we're going to look at tonight is a life, a life of Belshazzar. And what can we learn from the life of Belshazzar? And if you want to know where it can be found, in Daniel chapter 5. Years have passed when Nebuchadnezzar ruled Babylon, and now a new king is sitting on the throne. And his name is Belshazzar. One evening, King Belshazzar gave a great banquet to his nobles, along with his wives, concubines. And during this banquet, Belshazzar made a terrible mistake. He dishonored God by using the gold goblets taken from the temple of God and drank from them as they praised idols, such as gods of gold, gods of silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. And then according to the Bible, <clears throat> suddenly the finger of God or a finger of human hand appeared and wrote on the wall, many, many, kekel, per sin. <clears throat> Belshazzar summoned the magician, enchanters, astrologers, diviners to interpret this writing, but no one was able to do so. Just like there were no magician, enchanters, and diviners that were able to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And then Daniel was summoned by the King Belshazzar to interpret the writings on the wall. For the remaining of our time, we will focus on Belshazzar and Daniel's engagement. <clears throat> Excuse me. What can we learn about God's what can we learn about God, man's pride? and man's hope in this story. What can we learn about God, man's pride, and man's hope in this story? Belshazzar said to Daniel, if you can read this writing and tell me what it means, you will be clothed in purple and have a gold chain placed around your neck, and you will be made the third ruler in the kingdom. That's in Daniel 5.16. Daniel responded, O oh, king, keep your gifts. Give them away to other people, to someone else. Nevertheless, I will read the writing on the wall. I read this and I pondered, why is this? Why, how come Daniel did not want to accept the gift that comes from the king? Well, here's my thought. Though the Bible is silent on this matter, I think it is not too far-fetched to consider the reason why Daniel declined is because he did not want any rewards from a king who dishonored his God. John Lennox, in his book titled The Inspiration of Daniel in an Age of Relativism, said this, Daniel was not interested in being enriched by a man who had blatantly devalued the one true and living creator God. Now let's get back to Daniel. Before Daniel interpreted the writing, he spoke about the Most High God. And he did this through the life of his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel introduced the Most High God in this way. O king, speaking to Belshazzar, the Most High God gave your father, Nebuchadnezzar, sovereignty and greatness and glory and splendor. Daniel 5.18 
says, the God, the most high God or Lord most high. The term the most high God or, or, or Lord most high means that, thank you so much. We can see this in Genesis, Genesis 14, 22, when Abraham said, Abraham said to the king of Sodom, with raised hand, I have sworn an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth. A.W. Tozer, in his book called Sovereignty of God, says this, to say that God is sovereign is to declare that he is the governor among the nations. Setting, setting up kingdoms, overthrowing empires, and determining the courses of dynasties as pleases him best. The Hebrew word for the Most High God, or Lord Most High sometimes, it says, is the word Elohim Yahweh. This conveys the idea of superiority, power, strength, and authority. So Daniel was saying, the most high God, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in it was the source of your father's wealth, power, and greatness. Your father was successful because of the most high God. But when your father became arrogant and prideful, he was disciplined, lost the throne, and lived like an animal. Daniel 5, 20, 21 states, says, but when his heart became arrogant, referring to Belshazzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, when his heart became arrogant and hardened with pride, he was disposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory until he acknowledged that the most God is sovereign over kingdoms of man, kingdoms over, of man and sets over them anyone he wishes. Let me pause real quick. As election approaches, it is wise for us to ponder what this text says. Regardless who will win this election, know this, the most high God still sits on the throne. Our responsibility as Christians, whoever God will put in that position, is to pray for wisdom and guidance for this leader. That is our task. Moving along. As I said, <clears throat> the title of this talk is The Most High God and the Pride of Man. How, oh, how did Nebuchadnezzar, how, about, how did Nebuchadnezzar become prideful? In Daniel 4.28, it tells us exactly how. See, Nebuchadnezzar became prideful by not giving the honor and glory to God. He said, is this not Babylon I have built as a royal residence by my might, power, for the glory of my majesty? See, the center of pride is me. That is the issue of pride, is me. Just as Nebuchadnezzar said, all the things that you see in my kingdom, it was built by me. It's my doing. But ultimately, that is not true. It was God's doing in his life. And he never gave the glory to God. And because of this, he was judged by God. So we see how pride showed up in Nebuchadnezzar's life by not giving the glory to God. What about to his grandchild? What about his grandson? Belshazzar, how did it manifest it in his life? Well, in his grandson, Belshazzar expressed his pride through idolatry. And we find this in Daniel 5 2. Oh, how true it is that our pride precedes our destruction. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16 8 says this about pride pride goes before destruction. Proverbs 29, 29, 3 says this about pride. One's pride will bring him low. The most high God is the creator of heaven and earth. 
He rules over kings and kingdoms, for he is superior in power, strength, and authority, and he hates pride. Since we know that God hates pride, what is a cure for pride? Well, the Bible's answer to this is repentance. It is not personal development, but repentance. It is not about knowing more about yourself so you can so you improve yourself, but repentance. Let's contrast Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. Nebuchadnezzar, in Daniel 5.21, he acknowledged that the most God is sovereign over the kingdoms of man and sets over them anyone he wishes. And in Daniel 4, 34, 36, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven. I praised the most high. I honored and glorified him. My sanity was restored. My honor, splendor were returned to me. Daniel 4, 34, 36. Nebuchadnezzar repented of his pride. And because of that, God restored him. What about Belshazzar? How did he respond? In Daniel 5, 22, 23 says this. But you, his son, Daniel speaking to Belshazzar, you have not humbled yourself. Though you knew all this, what is this? All the story that Daniel just mentioned about his grandfather. You knew all this about your father, his rebellion. Instead, you have set yourself up against the Lord of heaven. You had the goblets from the temple brought to you, and you and your nobles and your wives and your concubines drank wine from them. You praised the gods of silver, gold, bronze, wood, stone, which cannot hear or see or understand. But you did not honor the God who holds in his hand your life and all your ways. How scary that is. Do you know this God that you dishonor is the same God that holds your life in his hand. That he has the right to take it at any way at any time. But yet this is the God that Belshazzar dishonored. As we can see, Reading the text, there is no sign of Belshazzar repenting. There is no such thing as, oh, uh, I'm sorry for what I did. I did not know. There's no such thing in this text. There's no such thing as bowing down to the God after he heard this judgment in his life that Daniel just proclaimed. Because Belshazzar unrepented, uh, as we see, there's no sign of Belshazzar repenting. And because of Belshazzar unrepented heart, God judged him. And here it is. In Daniel 5.25, it says, Mene, mene, tekel parsen. Mene, God has numbered the days of your reign and brought it to an end. This shows us the sovereignty of God determines the length of time of, of how, who will the ruler is and the length of how long they will rule. Tekel, you have been weighed on the scales and found wanting guilty. This reminds you of Hebrew 4.13 that says, Everything is uncovered and laid before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. There's nothing that's hidden before God's eyes. And therefore, his judgments are always righteous and always right, for he sees everything. I want to go back to the, to the idols in Daniel 5, 23. God viewed idolatry as an evil, and God defines evil this way. In Jeremiah 2, 13, it says this, My people have abandoned me, the fountain of the living water, and they have dug cisterns, cracked cisterns that cannot hold water at all. What is evil? Abandoning God, the fountain of the living water, and then what? Pursuing something to replace him that cannot sustain us. To me, that sounds like idolatry. 
pursuing something that we think they will satisfy us, but in the end, we know it won't. Go back to the menace, menace to kill our sin. Perez says, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes, Medes and Persians. God has the right and the authority to raise kingdom and bring them down. The most high God is sovereign over kingdoms of men and sets over them anyone he wishes, Daniel 434. This is the most high God. I find it very interesting, Belshazzar's response, very odd after hearing the judgment. Here he, there he was, he was be, just being judged that your time is up. You're, uh, you're gone, you're, you're, you're rule, your ruling time is done. The God that you dishonor, he's about to take your life. But yet in Daniel 5.29, here's, here's, here's what he responds. Then Belshazzar's command, he still commanded that for someone to put purple clothes in Daniel, gold chain around Daniel's neck and proclaim him the third ruler in the kingdom. Even before that, Daniel said, I don't want these things. But yet here, Belshazzar forcing these things to him. And I thought about why. Why did Belshazzar insisted on gifting and promoting Daniel after Daniel declined? Well, could it be, could it be that Belshazzar was trying to bribe and buy his way out from the judgment he just heard? Could it be possible? You know, I wonder if I can just bribe this man of uh, this person who, re who represent the Most High God. I wonder if I can bribe him if this judgment will not fall on my head, if it will somehow disappear. I wonder. So far, so far we have seen the sovereignty of God over kingdoms and rulers and how he abhorred pride. As I said, what, what, then what is the cure? What is the cure for pride? Repentance. Repentance. If that is a cure, then I think it's worth taking the time to know what is repentance. So what is repentance? In the Bible, the word repent means to change one's mind. The Bible also tells us that true repentance will result in change of action. In summarizing Paul's ministry, Paul declares, I preach that you should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. Acts 24, Acts 26, 20. The full biblical definition of repentance is a change of mind that results in a change of action. Within the context of Daniel 5, Repentance is to acknowledge the most high God as supreme ruler over all creation and turn away from all idols. Closing remark. That very night, Belshazzar, king of Babylon, was slain. Daniel 5.31 Little did Belshazzar know the night he planned to have a feast with his nobles was his last night to be alive. Just as Belshazzar, Belshazzar did not know when his last day was, we too don't know when we will take our last breath. If you have repented, turn away from your sins and confess Christ as your Lord and Savior, then your final destination, which is heaven, is secured in God's hand. But if you haven't repented and accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, your eternity is secure as well in Satan's hand. If you fall on the ladder, the words that I just uttered seems unloving and judging but do know the reason I said them is because I want the best for you. 
The life that we have in this world is like a fleeting shadow or a smoke. We see it and it vanishes before our eyes. But the life to come is eternal. And either it will be, either it will be lived in the presence of the Most High, showered with everlasting joy, or apart from His love and protection from eternity. May the story of Belshazzar be a warning and a lesson for all of us. Yes, God loves us and always ready to forgive us. But let us not make a mistake by abhorring idols and not giving him the glory that he deserves as the Most High God. I will close in a prayer. Free us, O God, from all the idols in our lives. Help us see you for who you are. Our greatest joy, our hope, and in you alone we find hope. Help us to continue to abide in our Lord Jesus Christ, our King, our Savior, and life. That saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see It was grace that taught His mercy.
Tekel. Tekel. You've been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Indeed, all of us have been weighed and found wanting. We've all sinned against the Most High God in our actions, in our deeds, in our words, in our thoughts. We've placed ourselves and other idols of gold and silver, of our endeavors and other idols in God's place. But God, in his amazing grace, he didn't leave us in that state. God numbered the days of our kingdoms, and he brought them to an end. And he didn't leave us without a ruler, but he sent his son. The Bible says in John chapter 3 that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And for those of us who've surrendered to that son, for those of us who've surrendered to Jesus, we have been saved. And we now have a new Lord, a new ruler, a new king. And this king also ate and drank with his friends. First Corinthians chapter 11 says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This was the decree given by King Jesus to his followers. And we honor that decree tonight in taking together. But unlike Belteshazzar, we eat and drink in honor and remembrance of the Lord. Let's take the bread. And the cup. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we praise you for your mercy and amazing grace in our lives. That by your death and resurrection, we have been forgiven, even though we've been measured and found wanting. And we look forward to the day when we will eat and drink with you in the eternal kingdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Before I pronounce the benediction tonight, let me give you a few takeaways from tonight's message. Man's pride, my pride, competes with the Most High God because my pride takes glory away from God. The cure for pride is repentance, not personal improvement. We saw two proud kings in tonight's message. Nebuchadnezzar made a proud statement, but when he saw the mighty God, he repented and he praised him. But Belshazzar did not repent, even though he saw the handwriting on the wall, written by the finger of God, the same finger with which he wrote the Ten Commandments. Belshazzar needed an interpreter for God's word. The people we live around need us to be their interpreters. They need to know what repentance is to change their mind, change their heart, change their action. Because none of us knows when our last day is. So repent now. Repent now. And put your hope in him. 
Continue this discussion in the Zoom rooms tonight. Just go to highland.us slash Zoom to find the room. And to conclude tonight, 1 Peter 3.15 from the New Living Translation. You must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. And all God's people say, amen. Thank you for tuning in tonight, and we will see you next week. Have a great week in the Lord.